Diabetic renopathy is a small vessel ischemic disease. When the blood sugars are elevated, it can affect the blood vessels anywhere in your body. It can affect your heart, your kidneys, the nerve endings, or the fingers and toes. But it also affects the back of your eyes, called the retina, where it primarily affects the arteries and the veins. What it does is that it causes a lack of blood circulation. When the retina is robbed of its blood supply, it gets distressed. We found that one of the factors that is released in a distressed retina is called vascular endothelial growth factor, also known as VEGF. When VEGF is, is upregulated in a distressed eye, it causes the existing blood vessels to leak blood and fluid. And when it leaks blood and fluid in the center of the retina, we call that macular edema, and that can lead to blurred vision. But it can also lead to a lack of blood circulation uh, that can affect the peripheral retina and can make those existing blood vessels grow. And when these blood vessels grow, we call that neovascularization, which means new blood vessels. Now, these new blood vessels are very friable. They can actually bleed into the middle of your eye, and patients can develop a shadow in their vision, which is known as a vitreous hemorrhage. Now, these blood vessels also grow with a scaffolding of scar tissue. And when this scar tissue grows into the vitreous, it can contract, and that can lead to the retina to be uh, detached. We call that attraction retinal detachment. There are several forms of diabetic retinopathy. There's the non-proliferative form and the proliferative form. Patients who start off with diabetic retinopathy may start with the mild form, where we see microaneurysms, and those are the outpouchings of the blood vessels. Sometimes these microaneurysms can leak blood and fluid, and that can cause some vision change. Now, as diabetic retinopathy progresses, uh, it can lead to what's called moderate non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. We often see more retinal hemorrhages in the periphery. Sometimes we see cotton wool spots and hard exudates. Uh, and as it gets even worse, we may see severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. For severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, we see uh, hemorrhages in all four quadrants of the retina. Uh, the blood vessels uh, can have some distortions. We call that venous beating, as well as the development of intraretinal microvascular abnormalities. These uh, or we call them IRMA. Uh, IRMA can be the precursors of neovascularization. When we see severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, we get more concerned. Now, the progression of diabetic retinopathy uh, can um, uh, get worse. And uh, when you have the mild form, we estimate about a 6% chance of developing into the proliferative form within 12 months. With moderate, it's about 20 to 40%. And with severe, it can... Uh, uh, progressive proliferative diabetic retinopathy up to 60% of the time within 12 months. <clears throat> so when it gets to proliferative diabetic retinopathy, that's when we see the beginnings of neovascularization. When the neovascularization occurs, it can occur from the optic nerve, the retinal vessels uh, in the peripheral retina, as well as the anterior parts of the eye, like the iris and the angle. Those can bleed into the middle of your eye, cause vitreous hemorrhage, and traction detachments. The complications when diabetes gets to its advanced stage, or what we call proliferative diabetic retinopathy, uh, occur with neovascularization. When the neovascularization occurs, it can stem from the optic nerve, the retinal vessels, or uh, 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 the periphery. And what can happen is these blood vessels can bleed into the middle of your eye, and, and patients will develop a vitreous hemorrhage. And, show vision loss. Sometimes these blood vessels will grow a scar tissue, and as the scar tissue contracts, it can lift the retina off, and that leads to something called a traction retinal detachment. Patients can go blind from that. In the front of the eye, neovascularization can affect the iris and the angle. If it affects the angle, it can uh, lead to pressure increases as these blood vessels block the plumbing system of the outflow of the eye. All of these conditions can lead to severe vision loss and blindness within the next few years, if untreated.